What's up, everybody? And <laughs> there welcome. we go. <laughs> We're back. I listened to last week's show, and uh, you didn't I do it. it. No, I, you I didn't. Promise. He, he I, did I, it. I he bet, he said it. He said it. I will bet whatever. Yeah, I was just so it. excited <laughs> that uh, you guys missed it. But anyways, welcome to the week two Swolecast here on RotorGrinders.com. I'm David Kitchen, joined by fellow Millie Maker winner Davis Maddock. We got uh, Peter Overzet and. Mr. Tuttle 05, Dan Gasper. Guys, how's it going? Dan, I'll start with you since we never start with you. Let's start with you. You know what's going on, all right? Uh, feeling a little bit of little pressure now that uh, Overzet just tweeted out that he gasped at my terrible take that I don't have <laughs> yet. So I'm going to have to try to come up with one during the show before we get to that section of the show. thought I'd hang you out to dry there, make sure it was extra spicy by the time we got to it. <laughs> Uh, Peter, how are you doing? I'm doing good, man. Uh, I don't know if people noticed, but LaVisca Chanel found his way into the box yeah. in his first ever career NFL game. Pants were off. It's a good time to be alive. We're down a hundred in the bankroll challenge, but we'll rally. But, and Laird had a nice catch and run. It was a big, it was a big first week. Laird has a path to success now too, apparently that Miami running back situation. Oh, they're, they're just uh, we, we have it on good info that they actually are playing Rochambeau for starting running back every week. And whoever wins that before the game gets to play minimum 50 percent of the snaps. It's the deal they have with the head coaches. Yeah. Brita kept throwing rock just <laughs> over and over and uh, bad game really theory. Out for him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, um, I I want to just go ahead and start from uh, just the beginning as far as sign up, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We'll be drawing at the end of this show, end of this show for a someone that wins. We'll do it again next week. Not for someone that wins. For someone that subscribes, we'll do it again next week. We're also going to have a listener league. So we, we tried to do this last week. <laughs> Interesting. So We're much like, shame. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, ooh, ooh. yeah, we can get 200 people. Just tweet out from our own social accounts. We have enough exposure. I think we got to 135, and that was with us really pushing it. So what we're going to do is create a listener league, and then we are going to give it out early so people can like obviously sign up. And then we're also going to throw in some qualifiers. So like last week, if it would have run, which we were only 65 people short, if it would have run, it was the top Scotty Miller team – if you had the top team in the Listener League with Scotty Miller, you would get a shirt uh, to be to be D as far as shipping arrival. Uh, and then <laughs> I'm not shipping out these shirts, by the way. People think that I still ship out shirts. No nah, way. No uh, one and thinks all- that. No one thinks you yeah. ship out shirts. <laughs> not even. You never. You never one. have. <laughs> and then we had the three bears stacks, and then we had uh, Tuttle. What was yours? Uh, Quintus Cephas. Yeah, let's not just not worry about it. I think you had Quintus Cephas. It was Brian yeah, Edwards. So, it was the terrible take. So you can either choose ROI and go for like winning the listener league, or you can just uh, use some of these qualifier teams. Yeah. So that should be interesting. We'll we'll get it created and put it in the show notes. So just I want people to know that it is there, and we will pro- we will promote your name. We will do whatever you want if you win this thing. Sign up for it. All right. That uh, also uh, Rotor Grinders dash media dash swole. If you want to sign up and get, uh, I think it's like five dollars off, ten dollars off, five dollars, something like that. Help us out. Sign. It's five. Sign up for it. All right. <clears throat> Overview for this week's slate. Tuttle. Play whoever you want because <laughs> there's basically no salary cap. Is your name Tuttle? Tuttle. Play whoever you want, because there's basically no salary cap. Thank you. Lar- largely, you'll be playing a lot of Cowboys in cash. Uh, Davis, you you agree with that take? Cowboys in cash. Uh, yeah. CD Lamb is fifty two hundred dollars on Fanduel, so seven hundred more than the minimum. He's forty seven hundred on DraftKings. Amari Cooper is only sixty three hundred, and uh, just let me tell you. The Atlanta Falcons defense uh, defense might not matter, but uh, I, I think the Falcons defense <laughs> might matter because they they seem quite bad. 
I'm so shook that Davis is now leading with FanDuel salaries. I know. I was That's just about crazy. to ask, Davis, how was your week one FanDuel cash game lineup story? Oh, gosh. So I got to say, my lineup was terrible, but I only lost about 40% because you guys are right. It's really just mouth breathers that play there. Like, it's incredible. Like, I, I played I played Michael Thomas, who got, like, negative points, I think. Oh. And and Here. it just didn't matter. So the the best thing about this is in our internal chat, we literally dropped a FanDuel. Maki Supa, Andrew Wiggins, literally dropped the FanDuel knowledge of FanDuel cash games, the, the recipe to success the last 10 seasons has been to pay up at running back. So what does Davis do? Plays Antonio Gibson. Hey, plays anytime, anytime you have to go with an unknown running back, you go for it. Wait, hey. Davis, is FanDuel 1.5 PPR for running backs? <laughs> Only if your salary is below 5,000. It's 0. 0.5 if it's above that. There's a weird multiplier. They don't advertise it very well. It's kind of like Super Draft with the multiplier. Makes sense. True True story was listening to the uh, the Gilcast, which you can listen to on the, the Roto-Grinders football network. That's where you should listen to it. Um, and was... I was laughing so hard in the planet fitness at some of like Davis was just so he was so sure about some of this stuff. And like when he's still, when he talks about Antonio Gibson, he's still sure about it. He's like this year's Nate Noling. He refused to take the L. It was the right. What what was I sure about? Like Antonio Gibson. Like you were like, Oh yeah, no, he was, he had a rushing, like we, we knew he was probably going to get at least 10 touches. (laughs) Like, on Here's FanDuel, I, he just was. I don't Here's think that's. He, he still I, I don't think that's what I said at all. Games. Yeah, he I thought he, he was back down. He was a terrible play on FanDuel. He was he not was, good on FanDuel. I should have played the the Dalvin Cook. Um, uh, what what was it? Thielen. I don't. I don't remember the sixty-seven. Or Ridley. Yeah, Thielen was sixty-eight. Or Ridley yeah. was sixty-seven. Yeah, I played. I, I everyone played got Thielen. bailed out by Boston Scott because everyone would have played Gibson if Scott yep. didn't open up. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I do want to say before we get into the the DraftKings and fan tool lines that we put together. Our cash lineups. Our cash, our cash, quote unquote cash lineups. We're not really cash lineups. They are cash lineups. I mean, we Someone, played literally the best plays across the board. We played the best plays. Our 190 points on DraftKings. I mean, we went with the double tight end stack with Lamar <laughs> and Andrews, and then Peter dropped the knowledge of Goddard in there. He also put in Scotty Miller. Like, yep. not a bit. It was legit. And we had Visca on both sides who scored a touchdown. Yeah. It, I, okay. I, <laughs> so just trying to figure out how this could have happened, is there a chance that by later in the week, our minds get so polluted by yeah. all of this noise, all of these mouth breathers out there that we get off of the good plays, but by recording Wednesday, when all of us have barely had a chance to even look or do any research, that our minds are clearer and we're going to build better lineups? Yeah, it could it could be. I mean, I don't know. It, I don't know. I don't think Davis actually played Le'Veon Bell last week. Oh, unfortunately, oh, yeah. Davis did came not. with the Le'Veon not. <laughs> well, it was, not he was bringing it too. Well. It's a good thing your boys now with freezing cold takes. Otherwise, that one would have showed up. <laughs> right, um, nice. And then on Vandal, we had the Seattle Atlanta game stack. I I played Josh Jacobs, and Davis had the foresight to play Taylor. A, a week in advance so he knew I the mean, injury was going to come he knew what's going to happen and visca on both teams so shout out to us that's all i want to say shout out to us we don't get it's enough. all downhill from here <laughs> yeah, we don't get enough down all right so as far as the the week one pricing i mean you have all these wide receivers we'll talk about in a second like in this really easy range where you can fit whoever so it's like do you want to pay up for running back or do you think there's running back value with some of the injuries that happen uh peter where are you on some of the lineup construction yeah i feel like i'm in just deja vu of last year because i just see all these cardinals and my heart starts pounding i see christian kirk at 4300 on DraftKings. i see this new look kyler murray who is fulfilling the prophecy that we wanted to happen last year I see mm-hmm. new Hopkins with like a 40% target share. Kenyon Drake is cheap. I, I want it all. Yeah. I have seen the word sacrifice 
in relation to Christian Kirk about seven times already. I think Reeves started that, right? If so, then let's give him credit. Lord Reeves, he's the man. Uh, So, yes, that that Christian Kirk was sacrificed in game one. His price tag is pretty appealing in, you know, that's why. And we by the way, he out. still almost uh, would have been like fifty one hundred this week because he had a deep target where he would have walked into the end zone, and it was you know maybe I don't know three feet past his hands or whatever. Like it would have, like he would have had a good fantasy week almost anyway. Hey Davis, <laughs> speaking of good catches, I saw you tweet about the amazing catch that uh, Rojo had <laughs> for Mike Evans. <laughs> well, oh you know, gosh. his it was literally his catch... just a regular catch. And Dave tweeted the clip the like it was some da-da-da, da-da-da. <laughs> well, I don't know if you watched that game, Kitchen, but earlier in the game, Ronald Jones caught a pass, fell down literally onto his butt, and had to get back up, had to hoist himself back up off the ground to keep running. So really anytime Ronald Jones stays on his feet uh, while running forward, we're feeling, we're feeling good. Grading it on a yeah. curve. Uh, watching that game, I'm telling you, and this is the only thing I'll say, those eighth round, long gone Vaughn, best ball shares that I have, <laughs> not looking so dead after <laughs> week one. <laughs> Wait, that's actually your take? Yeah. Ro- Rojo's going to have like 26 DraftKings points this week. Rojo oh, looked man. rough. Fournette looked rough. Fournette looked rough. Yeah. McCoy, they brought in McCoy for comeback. Are season. we, like, guys, are we shocked? Are we shocked that Leonard Fournette looked rough? Anyone, is anyone surprised? Either of those guys looked rough. Yeah. I'm not shocked either. Rojo did look bad, though. Like, if we just, if we're going to be real about it, he looked terrible. I just loved how you were just completely down on Josh Jacobs pass catching running back Josh Jacobs and uh standing Rojo and week one happened and you got I mean you got Ronald Rojo. Jones got 19 touches so comp- yeah. comp- if you dollar cost av- it, if you dollar cost averaged to into Ronald Jones bro he was fine <laughs> Peter any surprises for you from week one other than what we've talked about uh, surpri- I mean, I will I will take a big fat L on Josh Jacobs. Dot dot dot. If this continues, I need a I need a couple more weeks. I I mean, the Panthers are going to end up being what like the worst defense in football maybe this year. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm going to hold it out. But yeah, I might be taking an L on Jacobs. I think the Eckler thing on the flip side, a running back we thought was going to catch a ton of passes that wasn't getting used at all, uh, was interesting. And uh, Naheem Hines too. I think that that backfield might be um, playable from both sides there as well. Uh, Naheem Hines with a really nice pass catching four. You're not going to get his red zone usage that he saw in week one every week, but he's going to be a really nice PPR play. Speaking of Hines and backup running backs, are we looking at any specific injuries that could heavily tilt the slate, Tuttle? James Conner. We got to figure out what's going to happen there. I mean, he looked – he looked bad before the ankle injury anyways. Um, I wonder if it even happened like before, like if he had tweaked it before the game started. Yeah, he looked rough out there. Um, and then Philip Lindsay as well, who the turf toe thing, apparently. Here's the thing, like it's early in the week. Opinion may change on this. We have some really, really smashed plays at running back where yeah. I'm not even sure I want to play these guys, even if it opens up. Like, well, like Snell on DraftKings. I, I think is actually probably bad because they're such good plays at running back. Yeah, I mean, even so more so on like FanDuel, like people are going to be playing uh, MG3. They'll be playing Melvin Gordon, the washed up Melvin Gordon against a, a tough Pittsburgh defense. When we have like, like on FanDuel specifically, what we have the big dog at 8,300. We have just really, really good plays. Jonathan Taylor. We already talked about him. He's a much better play than, than, you know, some of these guys. So even before this injury news breaks, I kind of hope we we get it. I guess because I I want to be I think I want to be playing against lineups that are playing Melvin Gordon. That that didn't work out for Davis when he said that a few years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> take my head to that, heads. Yeah, that he wants to take uh, Melvin Gordon lineups on, but I, I think that's the case. I think you want to open up those doors for people to make that mistake. Yeah, you. I I'd rather play Christian Kirk at forty three hundred as my value play than Melvin Gordon at fifty three hundred against the Steelers. And that's the thing. I too, guess that's why I like. 
Yeah. I like there's this so week cheap. is because there's so many different ways that you can go. I feel like it it just seems I feel a lot better about this week than I did last week. But like even down. even even Benny Snell, who I think is a better play than Melvin Gordon, like Benny Snell again or or Deontay Johnson, who are you playing at the same price tag? Yeah. Let me uh, shout out real quick, friend of the show. He's been on the show a bunch. Uh, ben Gretsch. You can find him on Twitter at Yards Per Gretsch. He has the Signal and Noise newsletter. You can get it for like nope. five bucks. Try it again. A week. One more time. What? Stealing signals. Stealing signals. What'd what I did say? You call it? it that signal was the and the name noise. of his old the, one, I think, was Signal and Noise. Signal and Noise is the Nate Silver book from like 2015 that, okay. that everyone yeah, yeah, that everyone who pretend everyone <laughs> pretended to read. All right. So it's the same. It's well, he has the signal and the noise in the newsletter. So uh, go support him. It's there's a lot of info in there and you can it's all it's all like retrospective. It's it's looking at what could be what happened in the last week. And I thought it was interesting because that's the thing with no preseason. We couldn't figure out what was signal and what was noise like we just we were starting with blank slates and now we have to figure it out and we have to like hypothesize. Was there much that was surprising, though? Uh, some stuff like, like Corey Davis. All right. He's like 4k on right. DraftKings. Well, is that si- like people will be playing him because of that performance that he had, people will not be playing other players that had a bad game, like DJ Moore. like, like you have to figure out like what is legit and what's not Christian Kirk. Another one that was surprising. I like, need a gif of Tuttle saying, come on and rolling <laughs> his eyes at the Corey Davis. one. that was really good. <laughs> What about the like sn- like snap counts or playing time though week one? I mean Deshaun Jackson was the one that Malcolm Brown. Submitted. Yeah, that's fair. Malcolm Brown. Any any others? Well, the Eckler one I thought was surprising his usage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I yeah I I agree that there wasn't anything mega surprising. All right, <clears throat> taking a look at the top team totals for this week it's of course that that ravens game the ravens game is like you know we don't have the late night hammer game but it's the late afternoon hammer game ravens at texans that's gonna be nice and we have cowboys with the second highest team total against the falcons and then we have the bucks with the third highest team total and the chiefs with the fourth highest i wouldn't have thought the chiefs would have fourth highest team total but here we are Maybe people are overlooking that game. Chris so Godwin as far in the concussion like, protocol. Yeah. And Brady did not look good either. So having the Bucks above mm, the, the, the all twenty two guys actually said they they actually begged to differ. There there's all the the Brady actually looked good throwing the ball deep take has already uh been emanating out there. He I want I wanted to hate on Brady, but like he actually had like a respectable fantasy performance too. He was mostly but. he was mostly fine, yeah. The Gronk, guy who looked however, terrible was Gronk. Yeah. Gronk is dust. He's, he's, he's dead. <laughs> the screen. J- J- was JJ great. was finally right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shout out to late round QB for, for finally being right on that. Uh, Gronk is not a good tight end. All right. Um, game stacks. What are you guys looking at game stacks? I feel like we, we did pretty well with last week's game stacks. Tuttle. Well, I guess the interesting question, you you mentioned some of the, the teams we're expecting to do well. I was trying to figure this out earlier, like game stack wise, like Baltimore, Houston, who the hell are yeah. you bringing it back with in Houston? Fuller and, and, and DJ. And, and kind of though, the same thing with uh, even Tampa Bay, Carolina, like, yeah, there are guys you can play, bring it back with like DJ Moore, but are you really expecting them to like keep the game that close? I mean, it will lead to lower ownership, which is fine, but it's it's kind of just an interesting situation where I think like Baltimore is just going to absolutely smash. I think I, I actually think Tampa Bay is going to absolutely smash as well. So it's yeah. like, yeah, you can do the bring back if you want with the game stacks, but I'm not expecting a whole lot um, in terms of the bring back options in those spots. I mean, I'll keep banging it. I mean, Arizona, Washington football team. That's that's the game stack right there. You got the. Get Terry that Washington McLaurin. defense doesn't scare you, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can get a little Logan Thomas, nice, nice pump play tight end in there. Yeah, yeah, See, I like Davis. that. I almost See, like point, that one better. Point zero nine percent owned Antonio Gibson, dude. He will be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I who's got considering... who's got the stones to tout Peyton Barber? No. no, I was I was considering Antonio Gibson for a for the terrible take. 
Yeah. I was uh, considering it. I, I think Logan Thomas is a fine bring back. I, I actually love the idea of uh, DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel, Robbie Anderson as Bucks brings back uh, because, you know, you would imagine that McCaffrey – McCaffrey, regardless of matchup, is going to be like 15, 20% owned, right? Like in, in tournaments, you would think. I mean, maybe there are so many good running back plays that he won't get there, but more Samuel and Anderson will all be like 5%, may, maybe not even that. And uh, Teddy actually did take some deep shots. I, I thought that was one of those things where we would we would just get the lies in the offseason, right? Like you love when coordinators lie to you, but a couple a couple deep shots were were sort of interesting. Did you guys see that video of Curtis Samuel and DJ Moore explaining the Panthers mascot to Robbie Sir Anderson? Purr. So funny. Wait, so I you guys just you, you just go up to him and say, What's up, Sir Purr? <laughs> you call him that? <laughs> so funny. Yeah. Um <clears throat> the the ownership or the uh the targets in that game, uh, DJ Moore just looked like the rest of them. He's he may not be the alpha there. Speaking so of I alpha, think, I you. think that's I think that's the bad take, right? Like that, like that's going to be the week one overreaction that people lose money on is thinking that DJ Moore is not the alpha. It, I mean, it might be true, but it, it didn't look like that. I'd say if you want to go with DJ Moore, he's not going to be highly owned at all this week. I'll tell you the Swolecast game stack on brand everything. Pete, you know what it is. Titans, Visca. Yeah. King Henry with the Minshew bring back. The Minshew, Visca, whoever you want to play there. You could even put like James Robinson in there. Only only in Kitchen's distorted worldview is the QB the bring back. <laughs> yeah. No, like, no, the, because King Henry is the play. That's all. It's the only Titan you need to play. Over, bring- over under 45 offensive plays for the Jacksonville Jaguars this week. I don't, I don't know. Titans ran a ton of plays and they went hurry up offense, which was unexpected. So it feels like probably the jet, the Jaguars are going to be the team that like randomly showed up week one and then they just lose the next 15, right? Like it just was, it just was one of those very random things that happens in football, right? That's what it seems like to me. I mean, Minshew completed 98% of his passes. Uh, Peter, were you were you shocked at how many touches that King Henry got and the number of routes ran on dropbacks? I was stunned, Dave. I'm sitting here watching Monday Night Football. It's past my bedtime. My jaw is on the floor, and I'm like, this usage, if only someone would have told me this was going to happen, I would have drafted mm-hmm. him more. <laughs> I, I knew it. <laughs> All right, let's talk about quarterbacks. Top quarterbacks that you like this week, Davis? Dak Prescott. I mean, he's probably who I'll be playing in cash on DraftKings. Probably Josh Allen on FanDuel. Um, Weird. I I thought a kind of weird price tag for Mahomes on DK, where he's like halfway in between Dak and Lamar. And maybe that leads to him being like 7% or something. I kind of like that. Yeah. There there is the path as far as gpps as far as playing high priced they're high the two high priced quarterbacks with all the value that's out there so i mean you're not gonna get stuck with anyone bad with all the value uh tuttle yeah i mean i think you can pretty much always look to lamar and cash i think it'll be interesting to see if you can get there and builds my initial lean was kind of the same as davis is you want to save a little bit more than lamar um but I, like you said, there's a, a ton of value where I do think you could find builds to Lamar in cash. I don't know, and I don't think there's a specific value quarterback that really jumps out other than Kyler Murray at 6,100 on DraftKings. Um, but I don't know if I want to go any lower than that, really, and I don't think it's necessary in cash. Um, on FanDuel, I don't I'm trying to scroll through and see if there's anybody that stands out as kind of the value play but I really don't think you need it. So I would kind of, you know, side with paying up at quarterback and cash on, on both sites. It's so we don't really have to talk tough. about Tyrod this week, right? Oh, jeez. <laughs> it's really tough uh, for me to pay 8,200 for, for Lamar when Kyler's right there for $2,100 less. 
Yeah. Oh, but you know, you know who the Blitz likes this week? Askins. <laughs> oh, does it? Cardi, Cardi oh, yeah. just likes every like all of the cheapest quarterbacks. Like that's Cardi's jam. Uh, that was my I mean, that's my brand. So, um, but yeah, Haskins fifty one hundred on DK against Arizona. He has him as a top ten raw points quarterback play this week, and the best points per dollar play on DK. Top ten. Let's see. List it. Lamar, List Kyler, Dak. Mahomes, Matt Ryan, Deshaun Watson, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, Dwayne Haskins. So he's got him over Wentz, Allen, Tannehill, Stafford, Goff. Okay, Russell over Wilson. Josh over Josh Allen is is like I don't I don't know if I have a whole lot of issue with the, with most of those, but over Josh Allen is is not great. And Cardi does tweak these projections as the week goes on. Yeah, they'll be so. updated. <clears throat> these are just the baseline. Um, all right. Other quarterbacks that you like this week, Peter? Yeah, I mean, it's it's Kyler for me. It's hard to get away from that. Um, I I think I'm going to have Kyler on basically all of my all of my single entry teams. You giving away the secret sauce already? I am. You know, that's the one thing about me is I'm just I'm transparent. I share my process with everyone and I'll never stop doing that. I will never hide my place from you. <laughs> you you wanna you wanna watch her grind the film state that uh backs up Kyler a little bit? Let's hear it. So we saw that Kyler obviously had an amazing rushing game last week, but it's not like they were running designed runs for him. Or no, they were all plays. scrambles. It was all scrambles. Hey, Washington happens to have a good defensive line. He's gonna be running around again. Dude, Tuttle, did you get early access to that all twenty two? <laughs> people people been tilting on grind Twitter, bro. Tape. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Look at that, Tut. It was funny watching both the film and metrics communities freak out. They're like, where are my air yards and where's my all 22? I need where's, my scra- where's my NFL scrap bar and where's my all 22? <laughs> my scrap bar. <laughs> oh, the nerds will get that. I like, I, I do think on. Well, that's literally just what it's called. I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> all, like R, like the nerds will get it. Kitchen, you said you've actually been taking late night classes for R. <laughs> yeah, the, the uh, R studio, no. R shiny, all the, the all the R Tuttle, academy. Tuttle, Tuttle. Code Tuttle. Academy. Tuttle. Do you re- do you remember yes. when back at FI Kitchen yes. was like actually taking these classes, but it was for some like dead programming language that doesn't exist anymore? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that language still exists. It's I wasn't it support. like S- SQL or something is like oh, what you were learning. Archaic. No, it was Ember JS. It's a <laughs> JavaScript language. Yeah. Ugh. Much respect to all the devs out there. Speaking of, if you want to if you want to be an RG dev, oh, we got uh, a, we just opened up a position to help with lineup HQ. So, uh check us out check out the job posting on the Rotor Grinders Twitter account if you're interested in that. All right, I just want to throw out there that Ryan Tannehill is a cash game consideration on no, FanDuel. No. He's not on FanDuel. <laughs> no. Kitchen, yeah. kitchen, finish it on FanDuel. <laughs> kitchen. Nope. What's I your, love how what's Davis your... is fact checking me on FanDuel against the Jags. Come on, hey, Davis, dude. I've been grinding, bro. Uh, I'll, should we play? Should we play on FanDuel this week? If you're playing Tannehill, oh. I'll take your games, oh, yeah. bro. Here's yeah. the thing. You play James Robinson and then Tannehill on the bring back. <laughs> Is the bring back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, let's do the uh, DK lineup. And we're on four, or on three, we're going to uh, present the players that we have written down. We, what? One, Wait, what? two, what? three. I didn't do okay. this. I, I, don't have, I don't have. Oh, wait. <laughs> Is Higby on the main slate? <laughs> no. Uh, oh, wait. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Yes, he is against okay. the Eagles. I just want you to oh. know, I wasn't ready for this, but I fa- I pulled out a notebook where apparently I'd written a bit down a long time ago. <laughs> I prefer Higby in NFC West tight end premium leagues. So Higby it is. I don't I don't have a pen. I mean, no. the, oh, that's really the shocking. Listeners. Just give your takes, guys. We're supposed to be ready and prepared. No, the listeners and look at you. this way. The, the listeners Yahoo's. hated this segment last time. The, um, the writing well, down. do you know what happened? Do you know what happened? We crushed. The lineup crushed. So 
listeners can hate it all they want. Well, I'm drafting number one, Mike Evans. I'm drafting number two, Ronald Jones. Oh, gross. We got, we got a, this has to be a Tampa, Tampa Bay stack. Yeah, Tampa. Tampa. Tom Brady's Tampa the QB. Bay. Tampa Bay. Yeah, what are, I'm going to actually play along. Uh, I'm going to actually enter this as one of my Rainmaker lineups. Uh, this week. <laughs> you're giving up two cents of equity <laughs> dude i have i won't be able to sleep if rob riggle scores more points than me <laughs> um and i've yeah i've been sending gronk's girlfriend head to heads ever since i saw she was one of the rainmakers all right that's what they call it, these uh, it do you want am i sticking with higby or do i get my real pick you no get you get pick. your real pick since you guys were not prepared at all Come I on. tried to clarify this in the Slack, and you were just like, "I already said that." And I was yeah, like, kid, no, that you were was, not being that helpful. That was about the qualifier. No. That was about the qualifier. Okay. Nope, you weren't being helpful. This is your fault. <laughs> Christian Kirk, forty-three hundred. Oh, this is all a right, great so. team. I think we already have one. Yes, we. So we've Derek won. Henry, Christian Kirk, and then Rojo, R- Rojo, Rojo, Mike Evans, and Tom Brady. We're doing this. Uh, it's a stack. Okay. Yeah. Ronald Who do we Jones. want to bring it back with? More. DJ. DJ, yeah. <laughs> Peter, uh, that was like the most fanboy reply. That was, that was like Davis. Well, Davis, when he was touting Robbie again, I'm like, that, that's chasing. We need to go to DJ. No, like DJ, that was yeah. the most like, that was like, uh, he could have just been on a show called like FF, uh, like serious hour. Like that was like, yeah. oh yeah, I, I really think DJ, DJ Moore is a yeah. strong play this week. Like, like, DJ. like Pete. Like no, like Pete being like a real serious fantasy football talent was yeah. right there. That's my DJ. All right, so we've got Brady with uh, Jones and Evans bringing it back with DJ, yeah, and then uh, <laughs> Kirk and King Henry. Man, this lineup is hot. We got tight end flex and defense left. Tuttle. Um. You know who's going to have a bounce back week at the tight end position? Was on the field an awful lot, ran a lot of snaps, or ran a lot of routes. Hayden Hurst. Don't love it, but paying it up, paying, paying up to, to be contrarian. It's a legit thing this week because everyone's got a 3K tight end they like this week. How chalk is Logan Thomas going to be? Like, for real, it's going to be it's going to be bad, right? The flow chart. I don't know. Gronk was like the number three tight end in the Millie Maker. And it was incredible. Yeah, he was that. He was that owned. No, I believe yeah. he was the most owned tight end kitchen, Oof. or maybe the most mo- most owned tight end. He looked terrible, man. They ran a screen. <laughs> they ran a screen for him, and it looked like he was one of the offensive linemen. It was not good. So we're like in the. Let's say we go Packers D. We we would be left with. Um, like Shepard, Crowder, Ingram, like not a very. We got to take the JT layup at fifty seven hundred. Yeah, yeah, and then that gives us thirty one hundred and down for D. I and then the, you know the people can just Peter throw it is way too want. serious right now. Like no I'm kind of player. Build good lineups now, David. Oh my god, good at DFS is a bit. It's my new bit. I'm not gonna lie. What, what's the best? Uh, I haven't even looked at defenses yet. What's the uh, what's Rams? The Rams against that Philly team is kind of appealing. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't think there. I don't think there's like a, a heli- Well, the 49ers would be the helicopter play, I, I guess. Except no Sherman now, and uh, Witherspoon's concussion protocol. Yeah, but no Levy on Bell. <laughs> I think the Jets are really gonna feel that. <laughs> Well, we're not allowed to say what our defense is going to be anyway, right? No, it's like if we did go that defense. All right, I won't tell you the defense. This as my rainmaker. <sighs> well, we're going to be splitting $300, my man, because I'm uh, I didn't enter in the rainmaker. I went a little bit more high stakes, entered it in the 20 max play action. Wow. All right. Kitchen, running backs. Kitchen, just, uh, kitchen just bankroll flexed on us. <laughs> Yeah, three dollar play. We call, him, we call it. We call him. We call him Awesome O Dave over here. <laughs> By the way, I did that Awesome O bit like a couple years ago. He's just recycling all my jokes. 
sad. Yeah. Uh, running back is running back is like sick this week though. Right there. There's like an almost in there. There are so many good running back plays that is this the Jordan Cooper running back week. Just play just play whoever you want. you want. Play whoever. Play. I don't. Whatever I don't want to give. Want. I don't want to give Blender any pub on this show. So I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna cop to that. But <laughs> who do you think I Rick mean, Road? Who do you think Rick Road is playing this week? Uh, he doesn't have a DraftKings account. Zero percent chance. <laughs> What's the Jacob Rick Road play of the week at, at running back? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Uh, so it's got to be whoever smashed. Yeah, it's got to be no. Like the Rick Road really play. Scored a touchdown. <laughs> The Rick Road play is you got to max out recency bias with someone who's over the age of 27. So, like, who's an yes. old guy who yeah, did Gurley. Frank so it could Gore. be Gurley. Gurley. Oh, Gur- or yeah, Frank Gurley. Gore, yeah. <laughs> You'll Gurley might see smash. It. All right. <clears throat> so, we have, like, I don't even know. Like, do you list your top three? How do you list your top running backs? There's so many. It's Zeke, it's Henry, and it's Clyde Edwards Hilaire. I think Tuttle disagrees no with No Taylor? Me Clyde. Well, raw points to me taylor is just like the best play yeah he oh, yeah he, taylor he, will taylor be the most on play yeah taylor's yeah. taylor's the lock davis it didn't take a lot for you to walk that one back is so the, here's a good question what is naheem hines going to be owned on DraftKings, and does it make him like a really strong tournament play he'll be owned you yeah, think why would, i, I, oh, I yeah. if people are jamming taylor that hard it's very hard for me to imagine Hines being yeah. over 10%. Maybe that's <laughs> wrong, though. Game log surfers will love that. <laughs> I know, Davis. Who, Davis who going cl- with who, the next level who, GPP play. <laughs> who hand enters their teams, though? Like, no one does that. He, Davis, probably the majority of players. Yeah. Yeah. No, no way. <laughs> you are so out way. of touch. You are so out of touch. You're... you're Spoiled you think in that, the DFS community. Yeah. Okay, listen. Davis, your DFS privilege is showing big time right <laughs> okay, now. Okay, listen, listen. You guys think that a majority of people like go on their app on their phone yes. and go click in the contest yes. and look at game logs? You know what? All, all my buddies <laughs> that enter this tournament. Yes, you're talking anybody that's not on DFS Twitter does exactly Literally that. up until like a year and a half ago, I would build all my lineups on my phone at like Saturday night, six beers. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, come on. Yeah, but now you Just have the highly successful lineup. Comedy hour show. insight knowledge. <laughs> um, okay, then if that's true, then Hines is going to be true, way higher. This is true. <laughs> Okay, then Heinz will probably be more. Here, here's the thing. Davis's logic wasn't bad in the sense that they're not going to be playing both Jonathan Taylor and Nike Heinz. Correct. Yeah. Here's the chat. I do. Most people definitely enter, hand enter. Majority definitely hand enter. I do that. I hand enter everything. Happens all the time, Davis. <laughs> and these are people that are taking that are watching time out of their the day cast. to watch. Yeah. Yeah. So they're even I, above. Look, I, I stand corrected and maybe... I mean, this kind of this kind of changes, I guess, how I think about entering tournaments. A bit. I've never had this realization before. <laughs> Fundamentally, changes how you think about. DFS. I assumed I I basically assumed that everyone who plays DFS in 2020 is using an optimizer. <laughs> it's oh, like oh, less man. than one percent. <laughs> Davis, no, I mean, Davis, it's so that- much higher than one percent. Davis, you just said that Rob Gronkowski was the most owned tight end in the Millie Maker <laughs> last week. Okay. Okay, let me rephrase this. The Millie Maker, I can totally see people hand entering. Like my dad probably hand enters the Millie Maker or whatever. But I, but I assume that like that's the contest on FanDuel and DraftKings that people enter is the million dollar to first place, and then it's just grinders everywhere else. But maybe not. Davis, I just love how like we're educating him. Like last week, he's like, you know what? You guys are right. FanDuel is a soft place to play. And this week, he's like, I have this. This enlightenment, this daily fantasy enlightenment where maybe not everyone uses projections and optimizers and the soul cast. <clears throat> wow. Okay. Other projections and other... optimizers and the soul cast. Yes, exactly. Yeah, the swole swole cast, cast for your cash game lineups. I got one more here. <laughs> I've won several GPPs up for life on DFS. I have an optimizer, but I've hand built all my GPP wins. There you go. All right. Let, let's talk about some uh, a current Arizona and former Arizona guy. Got Kenyon Drake. 
and you got David Johnson. Thoughts on those guys this week? Can, can I, Peter? Give a... Peter, let's start with you. Okay, Peter. Yes. Wait, I have no. A good get, story, just get though. it off your get it off your chest, Tuttle. I mean, I had a good sweat story that I was just gonna. I want to hear. That'll buy me you know, some time to look up some stuff about Kenyon Drake. <laughs> so uh, on FanDuel, Raheem Mostert was 6,200. Kenyon Drake was 6,600. Main GPP lineup, I said, playing Mostert. If Tevin cool Coleman's edge. ruled in, I'm going to yeah. put him up to Kenyon Drake, 6,600. I saved the 400. Changed the kit to Kenyon Drake. Mostert scores that 76-yard touchdown pass within like the first five minutes, and I was on life tilt the rest of the game. Could have been a That's really bad Kenyon Drake game if DeAndre yeah. Hopkins uh, did not get ruled out at the one instead of as a touchdown. Yep. I believe Kenyon Drake has what the, what the kids call been cucked by Chase Edmonds. I don't think so. I don't think, I don't think kids Edmonds, Edmonds uh, was targeted more and mm-hmm. ran the same amount of pass routes despite playing 30% of the snaps All to right, 69%. Well, okay. According to our friend Bren Gretsch, if, if you want to call him a liar, he says Kenyon Drake ran 25 routes to Edmonds 15. Then I is that in the stealing the noise lineup It's article? the separating the, the, the wheat from the signal chaff column. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then I guess that makes me feel a little bit better. I thought that I had read that Edmonds ran more routes. Uh, Davis, don't let, don't let facts get in your way now, bud. You're way past that. <clears throat> I right. mean, Drake is, Drake is cheap on DraftKings. Well, what yeah. about David Johnson? Uh, Baltimore bring backs only, I think. I don't want to play him solo. Okay. Right? What's yeah, the I mean, What's the news and note on uh, Duke Johnson? Not, not going to play? Not going to Very play. Highly it, unlikely like, to play? Come on, Peter. He was declared out before Sunday's games even started. Are you sure about that? Do I have to yes. I don't think that's true. By the way, we owe, yes, we owe it's 100% an apology true. about Jalen Rager from last week oh yeah we do uh, however go. however sammy uh reed shared some some sweet text uh one of them being that davis said miles sanders was a lock to play and he was not a lock. all right first of all duke johnson practiced today so all of you guys hey i didn't i didn't chime in <clears throat> All right. Well, I got a bunch of FFPC teams where I want to drop him, so I didn't really want to know that, Pete. I wish that you would not have told me that. Okay, let's uh, let's move forward to a wide receiver. There's so many. Oh, we we have not had a good conversation about running running backs at all. Yeah, the top running backs. Let's let's have this real quick discussion. Henry versus Zeke. Who you got, Pete? Give me Zeke. Oh, I mean, surprise. Zeke, Zeke surprise. on DK, Henry on FanDuel. That's the, that's the correct, yeah, that's the correct take. Yeah, I like that game better. And I, uh, I'll i take an L. And I thought Tony Pollard was going to get more involvement. And it was very, very minimal. So, I mean, and Dallas actually ran the ball more than I thought. I thought they were going to air it out more. So, if they are going just that heavy run focused and not using Pollard at all, I mean, Zeke's a smash. As a as a Green Bay fan, I am shocked that Mike McCarthy has not changed. Uh, just just shocked. Hey, he did go for it. He did go for it. He was aggressive on going for it in Green Bay too. That's not what people said was bad about him in Green Bay. It was is, that he had Aaron Rodgers and they kept running the ball. Is let Dak cook our new rallying cry? Yeah, we got a rally. That's the new. That's a good rally cry. <laughs> All right. Um, any other running back discussion before we move on? I mean, we should address Melvin Gordon because the the people out there they want to play him. Yeah, I'm. Like I'm. The, the I, hand have, lineup, I have zero. The hand lineup people is that what you're <laughs> referring to? I just just mean the people. The people want to play him, and uh, for tournaments, I would rather play Ronald Jones, who's going to get all the carries for Tampa Bay at home to Carolina. And for cash, I would rather go cheap at wide receiver and play Christian Kirk, Deontay Johnson, CeeDee Lamb, or two of them even, as opposed to playing Melvin Gordon uh, against the Steelers in cash. It's just, it, it is kind of crazy, though, that this week, because of the other running backs, that CMC and Dalvin Cook will be like the GPP plays. They will be 
they will be low owned GPP plays too. I can't do CMC. Thank what you. What did he guys. have? Only four targets. Eleven yeah. percent target share. Yeah, it's not a good matchup. He's so expensive. It's tough. Total said you can't win GPPs with CMC in your lineup. He he's not- no. Hey, look, guys. He's no. I'll, he's no I'll, pass I'll catcher like Josh stance. Jacobs. I'll take that stance this week. I CMC wish you would have doubled down. I wish you had doubled down on your previous stance last week and told us just play Josh Jacobs. That way you can fit in Devontae Adams. Yeah, Jacobs was was awesome. All right. Wide receiver. We got to move this along. Davis, who you like in that? Like, who's your top wide receiver play? Oh, easy. Devontae Adams. Yeah. But every every lineup, at least one. Michael Gallup, Amari Cooper, C.D. Lamb. Don't don't build a lineup without at least one Dallas wide receiver on either site. C.D. Lamb on FanDuel is just a... He's the gold star lock of the week. He's going to be 40% owned by can I, his projections. Can I give what I was going to have as a substitute terrible take this week? Sure, yeah. My substitute terrible take is that Amari Cooper is going to be mega chalk on DraftKings. CD Lamb's going to be mega chalk on FanDuel. So you switch it. You play Mike. No, you play Michael Gallup. Yeah, he's going to be the one that's going to like. He's just as good of a play as these guys. Had a good market share last week with the air yards. He's he's a smash play in this spot, and he's going to be the lowest owned. So yeah, you just I agree. Smash in. All right, <clears throat> Deontay Johnson Davis. Is that does that do it for you at all? Um, you know, I got to admit, I was short on him from like a seasonal perspective, but he led the Steelers in targets and he had like a horrible drop and Ben came right His back to him. His first half was terrible. Like yeah. fumble, drop, negative points in the first half. Now, I think the the people who want to anoint him the wide receiver one for the Steelers over Smith-Schuster are... You know, they're just being optimistic because they drafted Johnson at a good price in best ball drafts or whatever. But I think it's certainly a scenario where this offense should have enough passing volume, especially with Connor nicked up to support, you know, two very fantasy viable wide receivers. Now, I think I do actually think Kirk is is likely a stronger play than him on DraftKings. And that, uh, you know, if, if Deontay Johnson has, uh, you know, 11 catches, 137 yards and two touchdowns this week, like... He certainly is in, I guess, his range of outcomes. And Christian Kirk has one catch for four yards. I'm, I'm going to eat it, but I feel pretty good about that one. Yeah, let me ask you about some other guys. And, that, and this is why that range is so interesting, <clears throat> is you got Paris Campbell, who's looking Super like strong. potentially the Colts wide receiver one out there. He's 4,500. Uh, you got CeeDee Lamb, 4,700. You've got... Preston Williams, who's 4,800, um, you know, you've got all these guys in that four to 5k range. Not really sure what to do with them. Like that's, that's why I think it's, it's interesting. Uh, Tuttle, if you had to pick between Paris Campbell, Deontay Johnson, Christian Kirk, who is it? Uh, Kirk. And then Deion. Oh man. Nah, I, Kirk Campbell. Campbell, Campbell. Campbell. I, I think Campbell is the best candidate, obviously to be like 2020. DJ Shark. I just feel like, we, like we saw. I, I get the whole sacrificial, uh, you know, pawn piece in that game, but like we saw Christian Kirk's floor game. And you know, it, I, I hope it, people think like you. Yeah. <laughs> owns owns Dave. So maybe GPP. Maybe it's a GPP play, not a cash game play. What do we think Deontay Johnson's ownership is going to be? High. I don't know. High. I would just rather take Deontay Johnson than Christian Kirk. I'm just going to be straight up honest with you guys. I mean, I definitely agree with you, Dave, that Deontay Johnson has a much higher floor. I mean, he's coming off of 10 target game. I- I'll be interested to see the ownership on that. Cause I think that's how you break the ties between the lamb, the Kirk, the Johnson, the Campbell, because all of them are solid plays. Well, you break it with that. And then also game environment. And what's the game environment. That's the best of the three. Yeah, by far the, the cards. So early early week blitz projections on these guys to tell you how close it is. Christian Kirk, DraftKings projection, 12.75. Deontay Johnson, 12.72. And Paris Campbell, 13.31. Oh, so I, I, 
I have Campbell lower. I bet I, I bet that I actually have Johnson higher. I want to go look. So Johnson and uh, Kirk were within like 0. 0.2 of each other, which is just shows you how much of a toss up it is. All right. Nuke thoughts on nuke. As far as obviously he was the man last week. Um, Davis lineup builders by hand. They're going to start. They're going to target nuke. What, what say yeah. you? Uh, seems like good for like stacks, obviously. And we, we needed <laughs> to mention this. First off, I have Kirk point two better as well. Second off, Logan Thomas, this is a revenge game. He was drafted by the Arizona Cardinals. So we got to think about that for narrative and game stacking purposes. Do the hand builders know that Logan Thomas was drafted by the Arizona Cardinals as a quarterback? Do they know? They do now because hand builders watch this show. (laughs) This is one of the reasons uh, why I I had Logan Thomas as – my value play of the week on the daily fantasy accuracy cup challenge. I had to write an what article. What is that? Oh, the, uh, oh, kitchen kitchen yeah. gave kitchen gave away his free peasant labor to fantasy pros. Remember when you were gonna get me into this contest? Are there actually good prizes this year or no? It's a yeah. seven hundred and fifty dollar free roll. The the best see, prize really? of all is just getting to be associated with fantasy pros. It's <laughs> uh, it's the badge. What's it's the, the first badge. place prize every week? It's like two, two or three hundred bucks. But he, oh, what's great about this. this? What's great about this uh, expert challenge is that if you look the names, there's like maybe ten people that have like the experience badge. The bar. Yes, of I remember this. And I am the only RG person in like RG, the leading daily fantasy in like information, whatever sites you want to say, has one representative among eighty. And it's soccer Dude, day. I we remember just, we this. We had to send the best we had. <laughs> <laughs> I volunteer strip. No, 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 was busy. Those things were the softest tournament. They, oh, they, were they used so- to run these like two or three years ago, and they were the softest. And I was laughing tournaments. at some of the plays when I was clicking through the lineups, and then I wasn't laughing by the end of it. But, anyways. <laughs> yeah, as someone, right. as someone who didn't play Devontae Adams in that contest, I also was not laughing at it. Smash the like button and the subscribe button. We've only got 31 likes on here. We need more. We and we have we need more subs. We only got like 10 subs this show. We have Come to get on, to a thousand, right? For Devin step it like up. Us. Yeah, we got to get to a thousand before this week's up. <clears throat> All right. Have you asked uh, Smiz other- for some of like his pointers for like building a YouTube channel? He'd be more than willing to help. No. <laughs> I taught Smith. Kitch- I was gonna Smith. just say kitchen taught Smith everything. He <laughs> we were DK pros together. Just we would just. I gave Dude, away the secret sauce. Smith. Smith has thirty two thousand YouTube subscribers. He's a grinder because he works. He is. A, he's yeah. He is a grinder. I'm not saying that you don't, Davis. I'm just saying that like I don't know. All right. Uh, other wide receiver takes before we move on. Play the best plays. Okay. After seeing the Seattle and Atlanta guys, other than Calvin Ridley not being chalk last week, I'm like re galaxy braining myself to just playing the best plays and not worrying about ownerships. Don't don't at me if Christian Kirk bagels. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna have Devonte Adams this week, and Ooh. I'm already tilting about you it. You can the the Lions are down their top three corners. He seems he seems uh, like a tough. He, he seems like a he seems like a decent player. <laughs> My saving grace on FanDuel last week was Adam Thielen. Like, there is no better feeling than yeah, that suck out garbage. When, when, when Sammy Adam Reed, Thielen. when Sammy Reed and Soccer Day have combined on a play, you know that there's so much troll equity that goes into it that it's just a lock to get there. It's it's the sharp side. Let's open up. Uh, let's open up FanDuel, shall we? Oh, kitchen! I already had it open, bud. Uh, I stay, gr- I stay grinding. <laughs> Fanduel.com. <laughs> Fanduel.com, DraftKings, NFL Contest. <laughs> SEO. Those are the kind of tags we need in our Swolecast YouTube channel to get it on a Smiz level. Yeah. That should be our goal. Actually, let's just have Smiz on the show and then just steal oh, coll- all collaborations. Collaborations are so big for YouTube SEO. Crossovers. Oh, man. All right, let's do it. Smith, you got an open invite. <clears throat> Let's go with um, Pete. Since none of you 
wrote down your FanDuel picks, not even Davis. Pete, you go first. All right, well. Just call me Mr. FanDuel. I don't have a lot of choices because Davis told me I have to have a Cowboy wide receiver in my Correct. lineup. And then mm-hmm. Tuttle told me I couldn't do Amari or Lamb, which means I have to put in Michael Gallup. Well, he just said you can't do Lamb on FanDuel for tournaments. It's Michael Gallup. It's Michael Gallup. Amari will still be a lot higher on, on FanDuel than Gallup, too. So if I could uh, bring in another another take here, Colin Drew uh, bigly agrees with you, Tuttle. That was like his big take when we first looked at the slate. It was like Gallup just seems way under-owned. Boom. All right. <clears throat> so do we want to make a Dak Gallup team? Yes. Let's do it. I actually, well, how popular is Josh Allen going to be on FanDuel? Because I, I think he, pretty, I think he's going to be pretty popular. So that would that would reduce the DAC owner. Well, quarterbacks never get that owned anyway. Doesn't matter. All right. So Dak Gallup, um, Peter. Who do you want to? No, we already went with Peter. Uh, Tuttle. Who do you want to no, bring? No, it back no. I get to make the whole lineup while you guys <laughs> watch. <laughs> so. Some guy, the guy I really want to bring it back with here is Todd Gurley. I mean, he's he's on awesome play now. We're going Julio Jones. There we go. Julio. Oh, that was touch and go there for a second. You had me in the first half, Tuttle. The fish, the, the fish, the fish cannot. The people, I don't mean to say fish. The people who hand build are going to love Calvin Ridley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you say fish, and Russell Gage, you're like alienating ninety percent of our audience. <laughs> Buddy, I played Chris Godwin straight up over Devonte Adams last week. I'm the fish. I yeah, you're eliminating ourselves by yeah. saying fish. <clears throat> All right, Davis, who you got? Uh, so I mean, Jonathan Taylor is like comes preloaded in these lineups. Do we want to try and build a team without Jonathan Taylor? No, we just. I mean, it, you can play the free squares. Okay, well, then I want I want uh, Derrick Henry, and I'll let one of you guys use Jonathan Taylor you just gave me like a free play basically bro he ran 22 routes last week career high him and Josh Jacobs they're just owning the shit out of the lips all right um let's just go with Logan Thomas as the cheap tight end I I mean I get it but we're gonna need some with with the four guys the freaking the freaking revenge aspect people are really overlooking it all right, so who's up? Pete, you're up. All right, so if this isn't going to involve the Cardinals passing game, let's play Drake in the flex. Love it. Wait, who are our two running backs? Henry. Yeah. Oh, we just said Taylor. Taylor. We just said Taylor was a free square. Yeah. Oh, okay. We, I didn't know that you in there. picked him. Okay. So Drake in the flex? Yeah. Little little four p.m. hammer for you, Dave. Yeah. So if we go just with the like Titans D, we have seventy nine. We can get up to Devonte too. Yeah, we could get up to Devonte. Let's do it. All right, give us a cheap D, Tuttle. I got no cheap D. Somebody else has to. Davis, you get that cheap D. Davis, I didn't. I didn't. You got that? I didn't really think. I didn't really think there was any super great uh, defensive plays this week, but I, I was interested in the Arizona Cardinals just because I expect Haskins to take a lot of sacks in this game, and the Cardinals' pass rush looked a lot better last week against Jimmy. Nice little correlation with our Kenyon Drake play. I don't know if anyone heard, but defense wow. with running back, really nice correlation. I like it with the Logan Thomas correlation too. <laughs> yeah, the defense against your tight end. Play. Logan <laughs> Thomas transcends RB defense. <laughs> Wait, the, we can't even do the Cardinals. That's a uh, no, uh, no, too can't. expensive. Not with Devonte, we can't. But we could go. We didn't have to go with Devonte. We could go with like Adam Thielen with the Jonathan Taylor team, and then I'm we're doing, left with forty eight hundred. I'm doing Devontae play the Ravens D. Ravens, Steelers, Rams, whatever. All right. So if we go Devonte, Devonte Jets. <laughs> All right. Let's Done. lock this in. Lock. Logan. This is your uh, fantasy and do a cash game. Fanduel cash lineup in your defac entry. All right. Bigly. Let's uh, <clears throat> let's move on quickly to tight end. 
Davis, of aside from Logan Thomas, who do you like this week? So in a weird way, I actually think that people are going to go away from TJ Hawkinson after he did well last week because he only had like a 13.5% target share. But if Kenny Galladay does not play again, I just I have a hard time imagining that the number eight overall pick in last year's draft who crushed in college and is this incredible athlete is going to be out targeted by Quintus Cephas. So I, I am I'm very interested in going back to TJ Hawkinson on hashtag both sides. Bro, let's uh let's cool down the uh, let's, Quintus let's Cephas some, slander. Let's put some respect on Quintus Cephas's name. <laughs> His thirty percent reception rate on ten targets. All right. Uh, Peter, any tight end plays for you? Yeah, I'll give a shout out to uh, Mike Gusecki, grown ass man. Devontae Parker was back at practice, still looking uh, questionable for this week. Uh, Gusecki at 4,000 on DraftKings could be nice against the, the Bills. He, he played the whole game at slot, basically. I, I think he saw he only played like 12 inline snaps. So that's pretty good. Kitchen. Kitchen. Yeah. Who is Kitchen? your tight end Kitchen. play? You got a you got a tight end play, pal? <clears throat> I mean, I think on FanDuel you can you can spend up. Uh if you're not I think it's Logan Thomas. I, I, I want to play Devontae Adams on FanDuel because I'm probably not playing him on DraftKings, so I'm not trying to spend up a tight end. And you like you guys will I think Gasicki is also I know like it's kind of like a gross game, but I think he's going to get the volume there that he needs and no one's going to be playing him for GPPs. And then the other guy is, you're not going to want to hear it because you're you'll call me a Homer or whatever else. But I think that John U. Smith is going to like they're again, we, we went over this last playoff season in January season, but they are looking at ways to give him the ball in space. The guy is a, is a freak athlete. Kitchen's boner from the time they handed the ball off to him and he ran for a 50-yard touchdown still hasn't oh, you, gone away. <laughs> still erect. <laughs> they're, still, they're still doing screens for him. Like, I mean, it's – I just think against this ja- – I think the Titans are going to anni- anni- annihilate. That's the word I was looking for. All right. Um, let's, let's move on. Any other, like, high-priced tight ends? You got Mark Wait. Andrews against Houston in that late, late slate. I mean, Andrews obviously looking like player. the tight end one, right, Pete? I was. I, you took the words out of my mouth. I mean, he's 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 priced up, but he's you're still probably getting what? If Kittle's sixty seven hundred, you're you're getting four or five hundred dollars of value there on Andrews. I mean, he's in for a monster year. Love it. Love to see it. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to create the uh, the listener league contest right now. We'll put it in the show notes. Let's uh let's have our qualifiers. So Pete, what's the what, like who are we giving a swole cash shirt to in this listener league? I mean, I I accidentally teased this in the Slack amid the confusion, so mm-hmm. pretend to act shocked. But I think mm-hmm. that someone, it won't be Dave Kitchen, should send an individual a shirt if they cash with Frank Gore in their lineup. You have to cash the tournament with Frank Gore in your lineup. Yep, it's uh it's a high bar to clear, but these are really nice shirts and they will come on time. So it's, it's worth it. All right. I'm going to set it for 150 entry. I think we can get to 150. And if we don't, we better. Uh, Peter has like, it, there's going to be some sort of punishment for Peter. No, I, there is, there is nothing worse. And trust me, I've been down this road with listener leagues in the past. I've done them. There is nothing worse than having to send out multiple tweets on a Sunday, trying to fill a listener league. It, so is, brutal. it will kill your soul. I, I, yeah. I just want to crawl up in a ball every time. Well, I, I mean, if we're being honest, the problem is that kitchen's trying to get the click through traffic to the YouTube video by putting it in the show notes as opposed to yeah. just tweeting the link straight out yeah. yeah because it's for the listeners tuttle it's for the <laughs> well, listeners the, the listeners spoke and they didn't want it <laughs> <laughs> but we already missed like thousands of listeners by posting it late in the week so i will take the yes, uh, we'll take true, the l true. it should have been the swole cast isner eek and i will take all the L's what's the that. payout structure super flat um, i 150 top 20 top 20 since you went to your frank gore top 20 cash so not bad is it a 
rake free, you're going to pay for the rake yourself, Kitchen? I think all these qualifiers are paying for the rake because people yeah. will be yeah, playing, anybody, anybody, anybody people that will be playing Frank, Frank Gore in their, line, for the in their lineups. <laughs> So that's that's the rake. What do we have to do to get the DFS Edge rake free tournament hookup? We have to fill a two hundred. Yeah, we gotta we gotta we gotta have like uh, like forty thousand, fifty thousand more listeners, probably something like that. Oh man! All right, uh, Davis, what's the qualifier? Uh, you gotta play, gotta play Visca, gotta cash with Visca. Give me a break boring are we are we we should give a t-shirt out for the top lineup right it doesn't have to cash no like we like like we yes it doesn't exactly have to cash so the, to the well no that was that was lineup. peter's thing he wants to make it a little bit more no it should just be the top lineup that top that was peter's was suggestion tuttle don't let him let him do his thing but yes you don't have to cash in this to get the shirt all right tuttle what's yours top scoring lineup with jets defense That's, that's boring. Yeah. I want to give oh, these man. guys some hope. Taking the fun out of it. <clears throat> All right. Mine's going to be... I'm just going to put it out there. We didn't, we didn't even talk about him for wide receiver, but top lineup with A.J. Brown in it. I, no, no. Top lineup with AJ Brown or Corey Davis. If, if this uh, show had an hour and ten run, no, 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 no. Let's let's out Adam it. Humphrey. <laughs> <laughs> Top lineup with AJ Brown. You got to pick two, two Titans receivers. That's what it is. Pick two Titans receivers, and it can include Janu. Cannot include Derrick Henry. All right. So that Frank Gore, Vesca, Jets D, or two Titans wide receivers and the Frank Gore lineup has to cash because Pete is a crazy guy. Well, no, but I just want to say Frank Gore jets D nice correlation there to double oh, it yep. on your you prize. You can get two t-shirts. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're the top overall thing, another t-shirt, uh, make sure you're smashing that subscribe like button. If you're hitting the subscribe button, hit the bell. Also, we got our own podcast feed. People, people were coming out like, where's the swole cast? Where's the swole cast? No Disney World guy just yet. It's okay. Uh, it's time for Tuttle's terrible take, though. Tuttle? I substituted it. He thought he was off the hook. I am off the hook. I substituted it. No, you did it. not substitute it. I substituted it. Yes. I, oh, my gosh. I substituted it with the strategy of just playing Michael Gallup. No, that's not That's it's not a strategy. you got to pick a player. Right, buddy, come Michael on. Michael Gallup's need my it. player, then. Martin Gale, okay. Brian Edwards. Michael Gallup is my player. I mean, it's not a terrible take because he's going to smash. Martin Galing but. is literally, you cannot lose if you think about it. <laughs> you go, I thought you were going to go with Naeem Hines as your terrible take. <laughs> I think I that's covered that voice. for us. Yeah, that's, a, that's how we discovered that people build their lineups by hand. Naeem that's Hines taught discovered. me something. Final thoughts. Uh, Peter, let's start with you. Guys, <laughs> you're thinking about it right now aren't you no i just um i think it's important for us all to remember that even though we are kind of a, a high flouten elitist optimizer loving show that there's a lot of people out there that do build their lineups by hand and mm-hmm. this show needs to do a better job of catering to those people of being a show for the people <laughs> by the people and I just we want you guys to dumb to know, it down. We need to, d- <laughs> we, we are need to going, dump the show down. <laughs> we are going to really rethink in the next week how we talk about our plays to cater to the hand builders. And uh, that's my goal going forward. All right. There you have it. Davis? I just feel like I learned a lot today. And, you know, I'm really, <laughs> I'm really excited for that. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how, you know, being all in on the Dallas Cowboys could ever go wrong. They're a team that always behaves exactly as you would expect them to. So uh, I'm very excited for all of us to, you know, be united in our, our love and admiration for Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, and CeeDee Lamb, three of the most talented individuals in the National Football League. Uh, leave your terrible take in the comments. We'll give you a shout out next week. We'll, um, we'll give you a I, shirt, Kitchen said. Yeah. No, Best terrible shout take. Out. We're already shirt. giving away too many shirts. Davis, <laughs> we got to funnel all the shirt wearing 
of aspirations to that one channel. All right. Uh, but I do want to say MPO99. That's the subscriber of the week. You do get a shirt. So hit us up. Um, and we'll be doing this again next week. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. Like Pete says, this isn't a show just for the sure there's million dollar winners that listen to this show every week there are guys that put six figures in action every week that listen to this show religiously and they build those lineups by hand it's a high (laughs) it's a wide ranging show you talk about flexibility this show has it so on behalf of the guys davis peter dan i'm dave we'll see you next week on the week three swole cast here on rotogrinders.com